Hey everybody, uh, first off, thanks for watching the video. Uh, I've had quite a few people watch this, uh, my last video where I took the my RAM that I'm currently in and I put comma AI in it. In fact, uh, not not only did a lot of people watch it, the CEO of Comma watched it, and uh, during a live stream, you could actually hear his team watching my video as they were setting up the RAM uh, 1500 H uh, 1500 uh, in their own thing. So 15, RAM 1500 is now fully supported by Comma, which is pretty cool. So it's pretty fun to see, like you know, you build a video and how the response that you get from it and how it made an impact. So uh, thank you, Comma team, for whoever. Did that and then followed that up with RAM, uh, official RAM support. So thank you. That That's awesome. Uh, I've been getting some comments about a follow-up video of kind of my impressions. And this is going to be a mix of that. And it's going to be how to set up Comma AI in a different video or, or in, in, in another video. Because uh, my wife recently told me we need a bit bigger vehicle for more people. Uh, so we bought one. And I said the rule is it has to be on the comma list of supported devices. So we bought a Kia, uh, however you say it, tell you ride, tell, tell a ride. I don't know. Uh, we bought a Kia. Uh, and so this video is going to be me setting up that Kia. Uh, but before I get going, let's uh, do a follow up on the uh, uh, the original RAM video. So first off, let me flip my camera around. All right. So obviously, I'm still sitting in my RAM. One thing you might notice is I have yet to clean this up. Uh, this fell off multiple times. Uh, I just couldn't get it that here. I even put JB Weld in there. Didn't hold. I've never heard of JB Weld not holding. Um, but anyway, that uh, melted off. I live in Georgia where it gets super, super hot. So I'm sure it's over 100 degrees in here. And it just suffered with that. I did try the higher um, grade JB Weld for higher temperature environments. Uh, and that didn't work either. Ultimately, I don't care because you'll notice I have it mounted to the screen. And while I'm going to put the camera at face level, and that's about right, um, it sucks for me. The way it is, because as you can see, like for me, it's more like that. I lose more than half the screen where it's mounted. Um, but honestly, I don't care. Um, I just, I don't really need to see that screen. Um, it works a lot better. Having it mounted there works a lot better than this special mount that obviously this is not Comma AI supported anyway. Um, so yeah, uh, moving it to the window was a super uh, difference for me as far as uh, how the vehicle drove down the road. So recommendation change there. You'll see I still haven't put this plastic piece in there. It's been a long time. I think it's just that part of my brain. It's like as soon as I put that plastic piece in, I'll need to pull it out and break it again. So it hasn't bothered me. It's just sat there like that for, for a while. So what I'm really interested in this video is uh, unlike my Tesla that, you know, you spend $12,000 for autopilot, which is hiding over there in the garage. Um, this is an autopilot system that allows me to move it. So actually I've never tried taking it off before. I just did it. All right. That was super simple. Uh, and it's just a simple USB C plug, which with two hands will be easier than one. So I'm not going to do that with one hand, uh, but I'm going to unplug that. And then we're going to go over to the new Kia and we're going to set it up. So one thing I learned in my previous video that I made a mistake on is the first thing you should do is pull these tabs out of the bag and mount them to your thing. So I'm going to do that first, um, which is going to be a little tricky because uh, I don't know where to mount it exactly. But I'm going to figure that out and then I'll show you the finished result. So before I mount this thing, I realize there's uh, something I want to do. I want to see where I should mount it uh, so that how the camera sits the road. So I need some power here. So I went ahead and went down here and I plugged in a little port thing. I know it's got a four letter acronym, but anyway, I'm, I'm just doing it temporary. It's just hanging here. Uh, I've plugged it into here, but I now need, know I need to get these into that unit up there. So I'm gonna rip this off and uh, plug that in real quick. All right, first off, major points to Kia here. Compared to my RAM, this was cake. Uh, this little port, I just put my finger in there and pulled down like that, popped right off. Uh, nothing broke. Look at that, Kia, well designed, unlike RAM. All right, this is why I like to shoot videos like this because, you know, installing this stuff isn't hard. There's just a very small barrier of knowledge that needs to be passed on. So the barrier I have and I want everyone else to have here is see that clip? It goes in so the thing slides in. Like you got to come up and in it. And this clip is the same way. Um, so when you're pulling this off, you don't want to pull straight down. You want to actually kind of push it downward uh, on the thing and then that'll pop right off. I'm sitting here editing my video and I realize what I said in the video is wrong. So that thing's mounted on the, on the Kia like this. And I said, pull it down. And what I mean, like down along the window, but that actually won't work 
because while the top of it has those little clips, the bottom is needs to be popped out. So if that's the thing, you need to kind of click that out just a hair, like half an inch. The bottom part is click and then down. So it's click and then down. This is actually pretty simple to uh, pop off. I don't think I broke anything, which is great news. Um, but yeah, pop that off and then we'll go to the next step. All right, now that I have the plastic housing off, I gotta take this cable and unplug it and then I'm gonna put in the new stuff. So in case you're wondering, how does that gun get unclipped? You actually push up. I can't, you don't see that well on the camera, but I'm actually pushing up. So when it's in there, when it's in there, I'm pushing up against this thing and then pulling out. The next, the next step to this is very simple. You can see this is gonna go back and the port I just pulled out, and then this is where that cable is gonna go into. So I'm gonna take this, plug it into the female, and then I'm gonna take that and plug it into the actual car. So there you have it. Uh, the cable's not going into, into this, and then it's going out and around and back in. Eventually I'm gonna house this up there and make it pretty, but that's how it works right now. The next step's super self-explanatory, but I'll just put it in video so we don't miss a step. Uh, USB-C is gonna plug into the USB-C. It's too dark to see it, but there's one right there. And then that, the other end will go into the actual comma three. So this is a bit unfortunate. On my first plug-in attempt, I do not have power. One thing I do wanna call out comma on is that the connectors are straight. Um, for those of you following this that just have a Kia, see how that's straight out of there? It's actually kind of disappointing because the one I had for my RAM turned, and you actually can see the indentation of how the other connector they sent fits in. I got a bit of a bad news. I did get the thing to boot up. It's booting up now, but Kama really shouldn't be using this cable. The cable that came with my RAM, like I said, it has this indentation right here, and it, it does a 90 degree bend. And by having it at 90 degree bend, it's impossible to plug in wrong. This one's straight up and down. So, there's a, the USB C is at the very bottom of it. And the problem is that there's wiggle room by about five degrees to left and right. So if you're, you think it might be in there and it's not, you got to find exact 90 degrees and then push it all the way into that connector, which I was not doing. Uh, and this is all because really comma should not be using this cable. The previous cable I have my Ram is a, a much better cable for this use. I've never had that problem with my Ram. Now the moment we've all been waiting for, uh, obviously this is coming out of my Ram. So the software is already on there. Uh, I just wanted to, do all this cable stuff first to find the best place to mount it to see what I like. And I'm gonna, sorry, I'm not showing on the camera. Um, so I'm gonna try to do it where my face can actually see it this time, but that's pretty low. Um, so I'm gonna keep going up until it's, I think I'm just gonna lose vision of it again and just keep it as high as possible. So I think I'm gonna mount it about one inch off of that. All right, now that I know that it's all working and testing, I'm gonna officially install the ethernet cable. Uh, we'll figure out how to route this and then I'll come back. In my in my previous video, I was using a screwdriver and then the CEO of Kama gave me a hard time and said, uh, don't use that. So I got one of these little plastic shimmies this time. So listening to some advice from, uh, I think his name is George. Uh, he gave me a hard time in a video. So I, so I don't know if this is a huge mistake or not, but I couldn't get the cable, I know it's hard to see here, but I couldn't get the cable to get in there. It's too tight. So I just decided just to pull, yank this off. I'm gonna run the cable now and then put it back and I'll let you know if that worked. All right, something else I learned with my RAM is that this side panel pops off. Uh, so I'm halfway through this. Again, I'm using this tool, which is nice. It's not scraping this up. And I was able just to kind of wedge it in there and pry it out. I'm hoping to be able to snake the cable from down here through here into the side to get it completely out of the way. And yeah, that worked pretty much perfectly. You can see these clips are designed just to be popped straight off. No scuffing, no problems, and now I have access back in there. And I'm an idiot. <laughs> this thing comes off, so this comes right off. Just take the fuse panel off, pop, and I probably could have just pushed with my fingers to done that. That'd probably been a lot easier. I didn't do it, but please try that before you do the, the thing I did. I, from that point, it became very simple because now I could route that straight through here. If you can kind of see what I'm doing, I know this... Lighting is very difficult, but it, it's through there, and now I can grab it easily through here, snaked it to the bottom, and plugged it directly in. So that's gonna be completely out of the way. You'll never see it again. So I, I'm going all in on this, apparently, because uh, this is really tight in my RAM. It was pretty loose here and down here. This is really tight, so I'm gonna try to go all the way up and then go around here. So I think I'm gonna have a little bit of cable exposed here. Uh, but yeah, I've just decided to go all in with pulling this thing. 
this was a super nice surprise here. So I got it in there, I could lip it in here, and then I pulled it and you could actually feel the cable straightening inside the column. Uh, so now it's not even here, which is perfect because then when I put this back on, I'm not gonna have anything obstructing it. So that worked out really well. All right, my nerve wracking moment is passed because I was able to just push that back in. That took me probably all of three, uh, five seconds. Uh, it went in perfectly. There was no goo or anything holding it. So it's just pressure on, uh, pressure off. And it looks, you would never know I even did anything. Just realized I made one small mistake. I forgot to put this in. So I just had to pull this back off and then put that panel back on. So do that first, put the panel on and then put this back up. And just like my previous car, putting this in here was actually super easy. There's quite a bit of space in there of a gap. So the only way, from my standpoint, I'll never see this cable again. You can kind of see it. If I go in, you can see a little bit of straps. All, all uh, that actually happens. And I got plenty of extra cable here to finally, uh, I'm gonna pull off this sticker, apply it up here, and then I'm gonna close this back up. I'm struggling. I'm struggling getting all this in uh, the right spot. So I went ahead and pulled the tape and adhered it pretty much dead center. I have no idea if that's a good spot. I'll tell you in a second though. Don't put it in that spot. It's the worst possible spot you can put it. I'm now gonna try to put it here, but the problem is this thing, you get one shot and that my stick is completely gone now. So it's gonna be a pain in the butt for me. Don't make a mistake. I'm gonna try to apply it right here behind the, whatever that is, the other camera. Four letter words. That was by far the worst part of this process. My God, Kia, give us a little space to work up there. This thing, obviously I made a huge mistake with how I did this. It's all kinds of jacked up right now. I don't even know. It's probably being held in there by pressure alone, which I do not like, but pain in the butt, put this thing back. It's, I mean, it's just a matter of, um, you got a clip here and here. So you got to kind of slide it in there and then pop. How do I show this kind of, you're going in like this. Uh, to get in the clips and then you push on the back end to clip it but there's so much crap in there now uh, you're pushing against all that uh, comma stuff that was the worst part of the job my arms hurt uh, I mean it only probably took me three minutes but working above your head sucks um, but yeah as long as you just kind of get those two clips in and push it back you're gonna have to finagle this I could not actually tell you where a good spot is there's just not a lot of room up there um, so I just pushed it until it clipped and that's it. I put the little thing back in there. Um, yeah, I mean, this is this should be done. I should be able to plug this in. It should work again. Great, she's working. I'm gonna do the adhesive, get it mounted where I wanted, and then let it dry for 48 hours before I plug it back in. Before I do, before I do that, I, again, I want to just complain to Kama. This is such a stupid cable. Not just for the reasons I mentioned below, but look at it. When I mount this thing, that cable has a tendency to bend where it wants to bend. It's gonna get in the way of the camera. This is the wrong cable. You should not have shipped me this. It should be the same cable that the Ram has. If if you guys got this cable, go to Amazon and buy another one or do something. This is not the right cable. I will be replacing this. I can't stress this step enough for everybody. Make sure you clean this. Make sure when you adhere the piece to it. I know the directions say you can go for a test run. Don't do that. Put the thing on there and wait two days. I've never had a problem with my RAM after I did that. I had countless problems with my when my RAM when I did not do that. Don't make the same mistake I did. Clean it off with alcohol, give it some time to dry, adhere this thing and leave it alone for at least 48 hours. I know it's hard, you just spent a bunch of money on this thing. You need to wait, trust me. Don't do that test drive crap it says in the notes. And I'm done, um, yeah couple things like I think I have too much Ethernet cable up here I think that's because I had such a success way of doing this where I actually got about an extra three four inches here and it all ended up here so Kama does a really good job job on these Ethernet cables being the right length uh, to the whatever the heck that thing is called the OBD whatever port C3PO um, but yeah that's it you can see the final job here looks professional you would never know I even did anything uh, I can't really tell you anything up there either. Put it back in, ready to rock and roll. Only complaint is that this cable needs to be replaced. It's also way too long. So I might have to wait a couple days before I post a video because I'm sure uh, the video is kind of worthless unless it all works and is driving. So I might wait, um, wait a couple days. Uh, but yeah, overall, I'm really impressed with the Kama AI. I know this is a question that people have been asking. Uh, 
of me because um, uh, I'm on the forums, people talk. The biggest thing is that it's not for back roads. It's not for country roads. It's meant for the interstate. Uh, this past summer, I drove from my house in Georgia, which is where I am now, to Wisconsin. Then I went across the UP to Michigan, camped up there, and then came from Michigan back down. All in all, it's a couple thousand miles, and my comma did a good chunk of it. Not only did it do a good portion of the trip, it it uh, I had a trailer on my truck at that same time. So talk about a relief uh, to be able to do this thing. And comma... Again, I talk to people as if you guys know what, uh, you know, having a Tesla AI system uh, is like, or AI, uh, auto, autopilot system is like. Um, autopilot Tesla is great. Like, I, I don't mean to complain about it, but there is something that Kama does that is a lot better. And I believe uh, the CEO calls it nagging. Like, Tesla is constantly nagging at you to touch the wheel and move it a little bit, which seems to defeat the purpose. Uh, also, you have to fight it when you want to take control. And I... I I really don't like it. And the more I use my comma, the more I realize how much I prefer that driving experience over the Tesla autopilot experience uh, because it is a partner. I'm driving and it kind of just lets me take control and it takes control and it's just kind of always there and helpful. And I really like that about the comma. Um, but Tesla is obviously it's much more advanced. I can do this on back roads. I can do all kinds of interesting things with the Tesla. Um, but honestly, I don't care. Uh, back roads, like I'm happy driving. I don't really want a computer driving for me on back roads because they're really, I live in the rural part of Georgia, very windy roads, very hilly because we're in the uh, mole hills of the Appala Appalachians here. Um, so yeah, I don't really engage autopilot there anyway. I typically engage autopilot on the interstate. And on the interstate, it's awesome. Like I, I really have no complaints. Uh, I'm still using three, C3 beta, um, which is different than the one I did in my last video. Uh, because my truck is a 2500 HD. It's really tall. Uh, in fact, I could walk over there and show you why I'm talking to you. It's really high off the ground. So from a, from a truck standpoint, um, you know, commas, they, they support the 1500 because uh, it's lower to the ground. Uh, but you can see mine is, mine's really tall. Maybe, I don't even know if that does it uh, justice, but I'm, a, I'm six foot and, you know, it's taller than me. So I have to step up into this thing when I get into it. Uh, so it doesn't support that because of the height difference. The C3 beta uh, the, that the RAM group has on their form basically applies a different height uh, to it, so it, it 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 handles that a little bit better. Um, but yeah, I'm really looking forward to the, uh, the new Kia and uh, seeing how this runs. And uh, I probably won't post this video until I'm done, um, but I'll I'll add something at this point in the video to tell you how everything worked. I'm complaining about see that 90 degrees it's fantastic it keeps the wire out of the way because when you plug it in the back of the comma look at that the wire goes to the right and out and not in the way of the camera which by the way i already tested it on the kia and the wire was in the way of the camera bad cable i'm gonna email to see if uh they will stop doing that but this is the good cable no problems with it already had a problem with the kia uh before my first test drive So I want to shoot a video to capture something. So today, just so you know, is December 30th, 2022. It is a Friday, the last day of the year. I'm not working today. Most people aren't working today, or a lot of people aren't working today. Anyway, so I'm shooting this video on my day off because I've been wanting to get the Kia installed because this was a Christmas present I got. And uh, obviously, as I've been shooting the video, you hear me kind of make these complaints about this 90 degree cable versus a straight cable. Well, I put that on Twitter. I, I, I at mentioned comma AI on Twitter. And um, that was the end of it, right? I was expecting maybe a customer service rep to reach out to me at, at some point in time. Well, it's the same day. I put this out three hours ago, technically. Um, and I was sitting there playing video games with my son and I see um, an e my email, I check my email and there's something from Comma AI and it's not a customer service rep saying, hey, we got your tweet, anything else. It was, your order is complete. I'm like, what the heck? I didn't order anything from Comma AI. And there it is. The cable I was complaining about is in the order. And uh, it's and it, they, it's been discounted. A $20 cable been discounted and it's already been shipped. That's crazy. Um, that's the type of customer service uh, that you read about and you rarely experience. Uh, so thank you, Kama AI. I, I really appreciate it. 
they had, by the way, they have no idea I'm shooting this video. Uh, I don't know when I'll post it, probably not until later this weekend. Uh, but yeah, they have, there's no incentive there. This is just their customer service. They don't know who I am from anybody else. Um, but my gosh, I was really impressed with this customer service. Looking forward to putting in the 90 degree cable uh, so it solved my problem. Uh, but thanks, Kame AI. Uh, thanks for listening to some random person on Twitter. Appreciate it. So it's been a week since that last shot, uh, but here I, I got this. And I just want you to see it. That's a 90 degree angle cable. Haven't installed it yet, but I'm not gonna shoot the video for that. Just thought you'd like to see it. As I said, it's been a week since um, I installed uh, this, or did the rest of this video. And the reason I wanted to kind of wait on this one is that uh, I wanted to see how it works. Um, so I was, I was wondering for myself, it's like, okay, when I plug this in my Kia, is it gonna work? And yeah, it did. And it actually probably works better than my truck, which was unexpected for me. Um, it just, I didn't have to change anything. Uh, I popped it out of my truck, set in a thing. I'll have to plug in this cable. Um, but plug in the cable and I'm rocking and rolling. So I did it on back roads and a little bit of interstate driving and it's just as good as, if not better than my Ram. So no problems. Uh, absolutely love this device. Uh, I love that it is uh, capable of being used that way. And now that uh, the other day my Tesla got totaled, I didn't do it. Um, I wasn't driving. Uh, everyone's fine. But uh, now I don't even have an autopilot to compare it against. So maybe I'll stop doing videos where I constantly <laughs> comparing it against Tesla autopilot. In any case, um, love the product. I uh, hope this video was helpful.